Hello folks, Halo here is my friend Seek, and this is our party play build update guide for Necropolis League. That was a mouthful. 3.24. Yep. It's looking like it's going to be such a good league. I'm... Yeah. Looking so forward to it. Cleave was finally nerfed. Us poor duo builds can finally compete with those damn Cleave of Rage abusers. Still can't believe they nerfed it. We were... It's, it's on the flowchart. Cleave of Rage is a carry build, uh, which is something I'll show later. All right, so we'll, we'll start off with the Orobot and talk about the adjustments there because there's some more impactful ones. And then we'll go over all the carry builds and the Mana Guardian Curse Bot. And yeah, that'll be about it. So we'll start off with the Orobot and I'll pull up Seek's screen share here and start telling us about what's changed. Oh, Everybody's right. concerned about the Mana Flask yep. suffix removal. For once, it, it, it was so important that I finally managed to revisit the notes section just to uh, give a warning there. But yeah, essentially, we lost the Mana Flask craft that we used to have in all these versions that was a crafted suffix that gave reduced mana cost of skills. What that means is there's basically no more quote-unquote good options or very easy solutions. Um, everything else you have to do for Divine Blessing requires you to press at least one button. It's not the end of the world. It's not that bad. It's definitely not worth giving up a Divine Blessing, but you're just going to have to invest a little bit more. So to go over the three options that you can use, that you can do broadly, it's going to be one divine blessing and getting 100% reduced mana cost as we used to. Um, this is a little bit costly, more costly than it used to be because we have to run a normal mana flask, can't run like an Ellie flask or whatever we used to stick that old suffix on. Uh, mana flasks can still, and I'll touch on this later, they can naturally roll reduced mana cost of skills during effect. And then you still have to do what you did before, where you occasionally take a couple points on Dreamer, or maybe take a mana cost mastery over here, and occasionally you're going to have to do a craft on a rare ring, like this, reduce mana cost to skills. So essentially all of those plus inspiration support add up to 100% reduced cost, and when you activate your, uh, your mana flask, that gives you the final bit, you can then press Divine Blessing. So essentially what you're going to be actively doing here is... Pressing your mana flask every 8 seconds has 100% uptime with Pathfinder. That's it. It is one more button than it used to be, uh, although just a flask. Your second option, and this is going to require a lot less investment, but also a lot more pain and suffering, is to use something that just immediately makes your mana cost go to zero. That's going to be Soul Catcher Flask, which has the line, you cannot recover mana during effect, so you press that. Then you use a skill so that your mana goes down a little bit, which allows you to activate a mana flask, in this case, Lavianga Spirit Unique Flask that says, you know, your skills have no cost during effect. And that flask won't then end because you can't actually fill up your mana because of Soul Catcher. So you press Soul Catcher, you Smite, or whatever you want, and then you press Lavianga's, then you Divine Blessing. That's the second option. Arguably, even more, even more painful is Guardian's Blessing, with summon holy relic so what this does quick rundown is you have to have a minion alive in this case you'll be manually summoning a holy relic it's just a skill gem it's a little guy that floats around follows you uh, actually dodges most stuff in the game but can still die occasionally and it causes them to burn to death over like eight seconds 12 seconds if you mitigate it a little bit with your regen but essentially at minimum you're going to be pressing the summon holy relic button which has a decent mana cost of 55 and importantly an annoyingly long like 0.8 second cast time i think um you're going to be pressing it at minimum like every 12 seconds and occasionally it's actually going to die from damage like i said it usually avoids enemy mobs but if it dies from damage you have to notice that and then resummon it and reactivate divine or guardians in that case blessing so those are your three options on the pob most of what we've gone for, most most builds use Divine Blessing and 100% reduced mana cost because it is just so much easier to play. I think it's what most people will want to use, and it's what I would personally use um, in almost any circumstances. So, so basically, yeah, at worst, like you lose a flask because you're using a mana flask now instead of a uh, yeah, just a utility flask with the mana cost suffix. So, like, the worst case, you use a, lose a flask, but most of the versions of the build are unchanged because we use Vertex as our helmet in a lot of them, just because it's so nice. 
Yeah, so yeah. For those for... builds, they didn't even use the uh, mana flask suffix right. craft, anyways. Budget end game, budget bow end game, nothing to worry about there. Um, going to early mapping, which is the first version that received changes. Leveling is going to be the same. After leveling multiple times, uh, further with rolling magma or um, rolling magma into Orobot swap early on, and then if you scroll down to the bottom, there's also rolling magma into Armacrima, which lets you do like heist later on or whatever you want. Um, if you're heisting, you like slap on a bright beak, you get to Act 9 with Armacrima, and then you click doors while your carry progresses the Atlas or whatever you want. This is at the bottom. This is for like an Act 10 or a white map swap. Um, nothing has changed as far as that or as far as the normal leveling path. For map progression, the early mapping has a couple of small but small changes, but ones you don't want to miss. Um, first off, this version is Divine Blessing still. Essentially, you can either at this point use a Mana Flask, and let me just go over so. Uh, since it's most relevant here, how you craft this flask. What you need for the tech to work is you need um, a mana, you know, any mana flask. Doesn't matter. Ideally, level 80 or so saves you a couple alts if you get one that's exactly level 80, so it doesn't add mods you don't want. 80 and is. Then you... yeah. I was going to say, on Craft of XL, 80 is about 50 or 40, 50% cheaper to craft um, okay. than using like an 86. So it's uh, yeah. You specifically it's want level eighty if you there. can. It's 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 not that big of a deal. Just pick up one off the ground from a red map and you'll be fine. But if you're gonna go buy one, just buy a level eighty. Right. Um. Yeah. Especially early on, you don't need. You can see. Well. God, I don't. I don't want to find it in this uh, list of items <laughs> here. But essentially, it rolls from like nineteen percent to the highest tier is twenty nine percent. Early on. You can just get, I, I think any percent works. Maybe you need like at least eight, 18 or 19 percent um, here. So uh, for the later versions, you'll need to roll the highest tier. At that point, it's like 400 alts or something. But when you're just getting going, this can be crafted for as little as like 80 alts um, on average, I think. And the thing that allows the tech to work is that you need the prefix enduring or foreboding on the flask. Those are the ones that say, you know, effect enduring makes the effect constantly go basically you're recovering mana the whole time for boating makes the flask effect uh continue through its entire duration as well it just adds the mana on at the end we don't care about the mana whatsoever you just need one of enduring or foreboding prefixes and the mana cost suffix um okay i've got pulled up on, from that we yeah. got pulled up on craft of exile just to show people oh, please um so basically you want t2 plus it depends on your setup. You might be okay with like T3, reduced mana cost, and then one of the two prefixes. And it's about 116 alts on a high level 80 base. <clears throat> Not too bad to do. Yeah. All right. Um, where were we? So, yeah, for the other changes, as far as the rest of the reduced mana cost formula, um, what you can do is you can either just equip Honor Home, Inspiration Support, and this mastery here. Or the early and mid-mapping versions are the two versions where you can actually get away with not using a Mana Flask at all. And what you would have to do there, since you're running Honor Home, um, is you would have to anoint Righteous Decree, which it's sepia sepia teal, so it's kind of the only thing you'd afford, uh, you could afford to anoint anyway. And then you need a mana craft on a ring, one that says reduced specifically mana cost of skills, and that'll let you avoid using a mana flask in the early and mid mapping version, but um, it's not that big of a deal either way. As far as the other changes for early mapping, uh, I think the main thing that has changed is at this point you're on uh, Ghost Ride, which gives you a ton of energy shield, and then you kind of had this problem before where you your energy shield is what actually stops you from dying. Your life was only there really to protect you from chaos hits occasionally um, and chaos degens. And because of that, I felt uncomfortable using Zealot's Oath. So we were in this weird place where we only care about our energy shield, but we don't actually have any regen applying to it. So to solve that, what we're going to do in this version is use a life flask with the suffix recover an additional 25 or X. You can go with a lower amount percent of life flask recovery over 10 seconds and what this does is whenever you get 
uh, you take damage from a chaos hit, you like walk through caustic ground for a bit, you can press the life flask, and essentially it's going to stop you from having to think about your life bar for the next 10 seconds. And so because of that, we can take Zealot's Oath, get a ton of energy shield regen, and specifically, um, if you don't need your ring slot for like chaos res or anything like that, you can use a good old Kikazaru, give you like 200 ES regen at this point. The more I play this game, the more I uh, start to love recovery, like regen as a defensive layer, because it just feels so nice. Yeah, the, the days of relying solely on Ghost Dance, as broken as it is, when you allocate are, uh, it. When you allocate <laughs> it, yeah, when you allocate it, coming to an end. Uh, yeah, the other thing is this master here, I was somehow not aware of the fact that it can stack. I thought it was limited to one instance of this per second of recover 5% ES over one second when you take fizz damage. Apparently it's not. If you get shotgunned by 10 projectiles, you know, a magic pack hits you 10 times, you're recovering 50% of your energy shield over the next second. Later on, this is even multiplied by the regeneration, by the recovery rate from the Guardian sub-ascendancy. Um, so while the other masteries are still really, really good, especially fizz taken as chaos and armor taken as chaos, um, this is kind of the premium one that you want to take now. And uh, yeah, I think that does it for early mapping, mid mapping, more of the same. We are still on Divine Blessing. Not much has changed. I've put a Mana Flask in here. You can still not use it if you have like a Ring Craft or two. Um, yeah, I believe this version is pretty much identical. Uh, the one thing I want to mention for early, mid, and late mapping is because there was a nerf in 3.24 um, for the Ellie Res suffix, not the Bismuth Flask or the Elemental Flasks, but the actual suffix that says here, additional Ellie Res during effect, you no longer like completely uh, cap your resistances for free. And so while you're progressing from mid to late or early, mid, and late mapping, you're going to need to actually pay a little bit of attention to your resists. So like previously, we just had Essence of Woe and a Craft on these gloves, which is one chaos. Now you might actually need to get a like, tiny bit of res on it. These are now 5C gloves instead of um, you know, 1C or whatever it might be. So just keep in mind, if you are used to not having to look at your res at all, it's going to be, uh, you're going to have to get 20% more than you used to. Every time I'm playing an Annihilating Light carry and complaining about my resists, you're always like, I, I don't have resist on any of my gear, it's capped for free I know, from flasks. I'm just I rolled a Bismuth flask in Act 9 and I'm good. <laughs> and that's why we love Cincture. Mm -hmm. um, Alright, late mapping. Uh, we're off on our home here, so using the mana flask is mandatory if you want a Divine Blessing at this point on Alpha Howl. Um, one thing I didn't mention that's just a tiny thing that can make you more durable early in mid-mapping is like Alpha's Howl, um, Honor Home actually has plus two socketed gems on it. So if you actually put just like your determination, your grace, your discipline in there, you're going to be getting, at a time when you only have 10,000 armor, it's going to be adding like 3,000 armor, 4,000 evasion. So um, if you have any off colors, try and stick your defensive auras in the Honor Home. Uh, as we get to late mapping, not much has changed. Um, one thing is that we used to stick a lot of, uh, reduced mana cost jewels in, in the jewel slots now. Um, it's been simplified even further. So like everything is just energy shield and int at this point. You could also get like a little strength if you need it, or essentially the jewels are there to give you energy shield. And then on the suffix, whatever stat you are missing, you can even get a little Ellie res on here if you need. Um, yeah. Let's see. Okay, budget end game. So this is where you return to the comfort of the Vertex. So Vertex, just to remind you, has 50% reduced mana cost on it. If you stick your Divine Blessing in here, and then you can also put in like Soul Link or whatever you want that costs some amount of mana, although it's not really necessary. Um, this, plus Inspiration support, and then... I think one ring craft, or maybe insightfulness, um, is all that you need to get 100% reduced cost, which means that we 
for once, our flasks are pretty much identical to what they were before. We're using elemental flasks here. This is the one point in the game where the new elemental flasks are actually a good bit better than the old ones would have been because they allow us to go from what would have been, I want to say, 83 uh, max res straight up to 90%. I guess it would have been... I guess we would have been like 86 maybe um, from these masteries, but... Uh, Anyway, so the, the change to the Ellie flasks here, the Topaz, that is the Topaz, Ruby, and Sapphire ones, are actually a buff. Um, for this version of the Orobot, they help you overcap. It's pretty nice. One thing is you can actually... Uh, well, Halo, you want to you talk about the, the Annihilating Light? Oh, the versus problem. Nebs? Yeah. Um, so, like, when I'm running around with Annihilating Light on a carry, I just cap my res off of Seek's flasks with Soul Link. Um... <laughs> With them changing to 5 max res, if you're doing that as an Aurobot with a carry, then you can use Nebs earlier and just not have to deal with Annihilating Light. Like as soon as the Aurobot has purities up to like 85, or even 83 with Prismatic Skin plus the Ellie Flasks, um, that can let you just run Nebs earlier if Annihilating Light feels bad or if you're doing skills that don't scale yeah. off of... If they're not elemental skills, like if you're doing a Fizz skill and then converting, then that's actually really good because uh, you can get nebs a lot earlier. Right. And there, there's normally not too much of a reason to want to do that, because you have to be really disciplined with your soul link. You give up a belt slot on the aura bot. Um, but the thing is, there's like a 1% chance that Annihilating Light, because we don't know where Uber Uniques drop from anymore, or Pinnacle Boss Uniques, there's a very, very slight chance that Annihilating Light has been moved to an Uber Exarch Unique, at which point you will use... What, just like a rare staff, we decided? You'd use a rare staff. Early I'll, on. I'll talk about it on the carry build a little bit okay. more. But you, you basically use a rare staff, and then once you get the aura bot online, you can swap to nebs. Yeah. The, the main thing is to swap in and out of the staff nodes that you take on the carry, because they're mm -hmm. insane, you know, so you, right. you're not running a staff, you have to change those out, change your investment, you need less increased damage on the tree, and you need more crit multi, that kind of thing. Yeah. But, but the point surely is, they if, don't just change the rarity... The, uh, if of they a press the nuclear item. button, <laughs> surely that doesn't they, happen. If they press the nuclear button, then you could use potentially use Cincture here if you're willing to rely on having a hundred percent soul link up time, and then use these Ellie flasks. You'd put a a ruby on the carry um, to get Nebulous up when otherwise your option would be rare staff or Nebs with like eighty three res. Aside from that, um, not much. Obviously, this is a version where you got your purities going. You're in Victorios now. Um, use Bubonic with any unique Abyssal Jewel. That's the main defining point to this build. One thing that was changed I think is pretty nice is that um, previously in the last version I couldn't figure out how to get... Uh, we actually had to put Clarity in Victorios in the body armor, which means that it's supported by Generosity and therefore didn't actually affect us, the Aurobot. Which meant we had to like kind of had a lot have a lot of mana open. We had to use a ring craft for like minus seven mana cost and things like that. Um, as I was going over it on Twitch a few days ago, uh, a user duck died helped me change around a couple of things. Mainly, uh, Dreamer kind of sucks now that we now that it doesn't give mana anymore, just mana regenerate and obviously the reduced cost. So now we take uh, Mind Drinker over here. Clarity is just moved to, I think I put it in uh, a ring or something, but um, what is it? It's in the boots now, so it affects you. You don't need to worry about mana problems anymore, essentially. Uh, so that's a nice change, I think. Um, that does it for budget endgame. Yep. Unreserved mana is looking a little high. Did something get crangled on the version we were setting this up? I am sure I just clicked something yeah it shouldn't be that it should be proper and there's there's so much so many working parts as i'm sure all of you know that just mess things up we'll look Am into I, it it'll be I fixed done. in the pob we can come back to it. It, it, it it's hovering at like 40 yeah okay well now <laughs> now right. you're losing I, your mind i don't know. You don't know where it is i don't know where it went <laughs> okay um, we'll figure it out later it'll, it'll get sorted in yeah. the pob all right and then again we have a uh there's a version for a bow carry because the main difference is that as a bow carry, before you have a fizz bow, you don't actually have four damage ores to benefit from. You just have haste, and then your flat damage ores of like wrath and anger, right? And so as a bow bow carry, 
you or an aura bot supporting a bow carry, you have a lot more freedom because you don't need to get, you know, 50% reservation for another aura. Um, and so you get a little bit tankier. You get, uh, you use Cincture to give your carry additional flasks. And this is really nice, especially if they're magic finding and they have like a divination distillate, a quicksilver, a gold flask, you know. Um, so this version takes Cincture already and just a little bit tankier. And that's, this is what you're going to want to use if you're supporting a bow carry or if you're supporting a Bama carry, which we'll touch on a little bit later. Um, if you're supporting Bama, you essentially pretend they're a bow carry until they have a fizz bow very late on, and you would use this tree. Alright. Going into the end game, this is where we go to a Redeemer or Effect Body Armor. We go to an or Effect Synth Helmet, ideally. Um, as much as this means we have to actually care about getting 100% reduced mana costs now, as you can see, we have the flask down here. 15% um, or effect on a helm implicit is just too big of a power spike to ignore if it's at all affordable, um, I believe. And so that's what we're doing. We go back to getting 100% reduced mana cost. You might need to spec, uh, I think this version specs this node randomly to get enough unreserved mana. Um, you can do that at any point if you have a mana problem, you know, just D level vitality once or twice, D level. Uh, precision or clarity first and foremost once or twice um, but yeah this is using a timeless jewel and so just a quick reminder for this militant faith the only thing that the only line that matters on it is one percent effective non-curse auras per 10 devotion the keystone doesn't matter the number doesn't matter with the exception of the fact that the number can change some of the notables in its radius to be a random notable that the timeless keystone grants and so you want to check the uh the timeless jewel tools we have or just grab one from the trade site and plug it into your pob to make sure that you're not bricking any of your notables notably like foresight, foresight leadership and reflexes are really bad to have replaced um so that's what you got to look out for we use a watcher's eye here uh this version uses reduced texture from crits we also sprinkle in a couple of Reduced from crits tattoos combined with Sanctum of Thought here gives you 100% reduced from crits. You don't need 100%. We're playing softcore after all, but it is pretty efficient and it's a really nice defensive layer to have, especially for things like Simulacrum, where it can randomly just roll monsters have 100 crit multi and like 800 crit chance. Um, it'll save you from a lot of deaths. Speaking of tattoos, if they're at all affordable, it'll be really nice to put... Um, flask duration tattoos over these dex nodes uh, as long as you can afford it previously to be super comfortable to have true 100 percent uptime we had to take essence extraction here and now it can be mostly mitigated by just throwing a couple flask tattoos on so all the versions going forward have a couple tattoos mostly there they'll all have reduced texture from crits and then one thing you can do is if you're in uh, if you're magic finding with someone and you're clicking a bunch of exarc or a bunch of eater altars um, you can see we're quote unquote only overcapped by 46 here. You can actually replace a couple of int nodes with lightning res as long as it's not going to brick your mana. Um, speaking of tattooing over, don't tattoo for 3% energy shield. It's a bait. It is almost never good. A a an int node is giving you 2% energy shield and some and five mana. And it's almost never worth the trade-off and the cost of actual tattoo to do that. Um, if you have a little bit of extra mana unreserved, again, I would recommend just tattooing reduced taken from crits. Every time we come back and make changes, we're just like, intelligence is such a good stat. We just need more of it, you know? How could we ever we have thought realize. it was a useless stat? It does so much. I know, we were just, before we started the uh, the recording, we were just going over the carry POB and like, looking at tattooing that character which we ended up doing to some extent but it's like small int node that's 50 energy shield right there um because only 40 yeah, but still the point is 40, that it's, sorry, it's insane 40 energy shield <laughs> small int node. you know but it's like that much for 10 intelligence you don't you don't think about it but yeah there, there was a point where i was tattooing the entire tree with like reduced taken from crits earlier on i was like hold on that's 120 intelligence right there um so we ended up getting it on a watcher's eye instead. 
the only other thing that's changed in the endgame version is we had some ink, like literally 20 chaos gloves in here before given that the whole version is probably going to cost from 20 to like 50 divines um decided to throw something better in here this is essentially just the way you craft any meta piece of equipment you start with a fractured mod in this case i went with accuracy rating because it gets your smite hit chance from like 92 percent to 98 percent or something you could also just go with fractured int to save even more money um and you just do essences of envy shrieking essences of envy i think it's like 30 of them until you hit int then your suffixes are full at that point you do use eldritch currency that's like Eldritch Chaos Orbs, Exalts and Nulls, until you get a tiny bit of Energy Shield. And then you craft Suffixes Cannot Be Changed, hit it with a... Is it called a Veiled Orb now? I think it's a Veiled Orb, yeah. Yeah, the the thing that... The thing that Ashling used to be, that's now an Orb, um, hit it with one of those, it's a 50%... Or it's a 33% chance to uh, remove the Energy Shield, which you're kind of fine with, and... 33% chance to remove the crafted mod that you just put on, at which point your gloves are perfect. Otherwise, you just keep it with 30 less energy shield. You, you want to unveil plus 2 AoE. You block conversion uh, for the unveil, you do right? Block. I'm just pulling that, yep. pulling that up, just to oh. double check. That's what the weightings would imply. There's some uh, apparently some very funky things going on with unveil blocking. Yeah, sometimes it's not, doesn't match up. Especially with, like, people did lots of tests with bows. Yeah. And how damage per charge is worse than blocking, um, I think it was a chaos dot multi, even though it did like thousands of tests. way higher weighting. Yeah. yeah. But, so... but yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you block conversion and try and unveil AoE. You need plus two AoE for uh, the purities that you put in there to get them to level 23, which you need because it gives you like an additional one max res on the gem, which turns into two max res on your on your bar down here. Um, let me see. I think that's all. Oh, uh, one thing is we have a manifold ring here. This is the inverse to the more used and much more expensive helical ring. Manifold rings are usually, I don't want to say dirt cheap, but um, they're okay. way cheaper than their counterpart. Like, usually, I don't know. Have you looked at it? I think it's like a divine or two. Yeah, it's If reasonable. people care about them. Otherwise, eventually, people run enough heists that they just sell them for like 10c. Nowhere near um, the uh, simplex amulet incident. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the simplex amulet incident. Um, and essentially, these are really good because once you put Crusader influence on them, you can get flat ES and increased energy shield on them, um, which you get by spamming. You can get T2 of flat and T2 of increased by spamming just like 30, 33 dense fossils. Um, then you just hit it with a reforge. A prefixes cannot be changed. Reforge Chaos until you get the Chaos uh, of a tier that your heart desires. Then you just craft reduced mana cost. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, just going back to the Watcher's Eye real quick to remind you what um, what other mods you can look for here if you're not in an environment where crits are coming at you all the time. So like this is really good in mapping. It's really good in simulacrums. But if you want some other options, you can do Fizz taken as uh, as elemental while affected by a purity is really good. Make sure to get like while affected by purity of ice, fire, lightning, not while affected by purity of elements, because that's a tiny aura radius that your carry's running. Um, you can get flat evade. I think those are the best ones. And then some ones that are good but not the top tier are uh, like clarity, gain mana as energy shield, spell suppressed by grace and movement speed. Which is also grace, oddly enough, not haste. Um, yeah, those are the main options. And so, uh, going to the timeless jewel versions here, just as a reminder, these are all. So the one that says militant faith, elegant hubris, and elegant hubris for minion instability, where those refer to the slot that you socketed in. So this would be the marauder slot, and this would be minion instability slot. Um, these versions are all three essentially equal. They're just a little bit different. They're the next version of investment after endgame. And essentially the reason why they're there is because the elegant hubrises, when you can afford a three mod, um, there are a lot of numbers. And here for elegant hubris, remember the number is what determines your ore effect. 
um, be sure to check out the amazing Timeless Jewel tools that we have from Liberator to be able to find these. But essentially, there's a lot of these, and they can often be less expensive or give you a little bit more aura effect than the Militant Faith setup would. Um, and so we've thrown them, thrown them in here because if you know what you're doing, they can be a little bit cheaper or give you a little bit more aura effect, for instance. So we just have three versions to show you how to utilize each of those um, as an example. But, you know, they're fully functioning builds here. People often ask, like, which is better, but it's just three different ways of doing it. Exactly. It mainly depends on, like, the price of the jewel or whether you already care about pathing over here or not. What type of blessing you're using can also make a difference. Um, divine blessing is typically favors like if you want to base your decisions on your character on which blessing you use. If you're really attached to say divine blessing, um, you might want to choose militant faith because it stays around here in the passive tree, whereas the and other ones always, go way over here. You can always get a two mod oh, militant kind of, faith before right. uh, the price apocalypse happened. With yeah. Those. Yeah. <laughs> Which is what we what we have in here. Um, previously, we just had reduced or increased aura effect per devotion, right? Now it's reduced mana cost uh, as well, going from end game to the militant faith high investment end game. Assuming there's not another Rutu incident where he uses it on the most broken build of the league and it goes up to 180 divines, um, you'll be able to satisfy most of your reduced mana cost requirements for the, for the divine blessing just from this, from inspiration support, and from a mana flask that we use. I think you need like one ring craft on top of that. If you can't afford this, what you're going to have to do is take like one point here and one point here and get a perfectly rolled mana flask and another ring craft, or much more easily, and it only costs one more passive point, you just take Dreamer. Just, to, just something I want to point out for people. Yeah. Um, who it's it's uh, they, people it's a very common mistake is people have a hard time figuring out what they're missing to cast blessing. So if you don't know, you can pull up path of building here. You go to configure or calcs, and you select a skill. So I'll just, just I'm gonna carry PV. Select Stormbrand on the skill specific skill type specific stats. You can hover over the over the mana cost and see a detailed breakdown of what sources of reduced mana cost you have on the build and where they're coming from. So if you can't cast blessing. Just open up the carry version, the, the Orobot version you're trying to follow, and check this, and it'll tell you exactly where the reduced mana cost is coming from, and that'll tell you what you're missing. So, and we said before, but it's just something people often miss, yep. so worth reiterating. All right. Uh, one thing I think I forgot to mention in the PUBs on Flask Choice is that we're using Taste of Hate because it's broken, armor is good, but what's better is 90 max res. Um, so we use Taste of Hate to convert a lot of elemental damage into, or physical damage into elemental, which makes your armor even more effective. It's also on the endgame version here. Um, so keep in mind that if you want to be using Sincture, which there is good reason to, um, especially if your carry is on the squishier side, Taste of Hate doesn't you know, carry over because it's a unique flask, so you might want to use a magic um, sapphire flask instead. But otherwise, it's really good. We care about getting the fizz damage taken from hits as high as possible, 15% if you can. And then, aside from that, it's just, you know, granites, essentially, topaz. Um, yeah, I th think that's it. So on the, going back to the high investment endgame version, and this is, uh, these next things are something that's true of the militant faith, the marauder, you know, uh, Elegant Hubris and the other Elegant Hubris version, is that we are now using the Dark Seer. So this is a reworked Scepter that'll now drop from a Tier 17 map boss. We don't know which one. We importantly don't know the drop rate. What we do know is that a lot of builds in the game are going to want a Dark Seer for solo builds. Um, and so this thing could be very expensive. It's good enough for the Orobot because it gives 200 energy shield, 200 mana, and plus two all skill jumps. It's good enough that it is worth spending a decent chunk of money on this. Maybe like you could spend 30, 40 divines roughly uh, on it at this point in the build. But if it is 
incredibly rare. Everybody wants it. It's 200 divines. What you use instead is you go back to what we used to use, which is a ephemeral edge with the resolute technique corruption. What that does is it gives you 50% increased max ES. It makes your attacks always hit, which allows you to put... Uh, allows you to put precision in the body armor, which saves you a little bit of reservation since you no longer need it on yourself for accuracy rating. Um, if you can't get a resolute technique corruption, which is harder now that Thermal Edge is a little more rare than it used to be, like after the change, the kind of reworked it. Um, right. Yeah, you, you just swap the gems back, get a little bit yep. more reservation somewhere, Good make point. sure to not run generosity on precision. Yeah. The, yeah. Good, good reminder, the corruption, not necessary, just nice, because it fixes your hit chance. Um, let's see, the other thing that has changed, the other major thing, is we are now using Tides of Time. This is a new, bo a new boss drop that was revealed for uh, Uber Shaper. It drops from Uber Shaper. It's essentially Pathfinder as a belt. It gives you the flask gain. It even gives you a little flask effect, which is really nice for... Uh, getting the getting move speed and for getting your mana cost down since it actually applies to the mana flask and uh given that it's a pathfinder ascendancy what we do with it is pretty obvious the moment i saw that thing i said never taken pathfinder again you go champion and then your choice of pathing to one of these and anointing the other with a forbidden flame and flesh um, Guardian, ever since they buffed it, has been incredibly powerful. This thing is just giving you three times as much recovery as you other w otherwise would have, essentially. As an Inquisitor carry enjoyer, the recovery feels so nice. It just is every yeah, build, but... It really is. The, the first Guardian. time we tried it, we were doing, like, feared rotations, and the moment we took it, we, we were just standing in uber uber shaper beams, the ball would hit, and then, like, two ticks later, energy shield would be back at full. It, uh... It's so nice. Super comfy. Okay. Um, I think that is about it for this high investment version. The last thing I wanted to touch on with Darkseer is he, it says um, the main reason we use it is for the energy shield and for the plus two all, obviously. But uh, what it also has the mod enemies blind by you have Malediction. Malediction is a crazy powerful buff for how few places... Uh, it exists in the game these days. It used to be on Occultist. But essentially, when you blind enemies, Malediction makes them take 10% increased damage. It makes them deal 10% reduced damage. So it's super strong. And uh, while well, you want to buy the Scepter when you can just for the Energy Shield, later on, if you can afford it, you can actually get nearby enemies are blinded on your Vol Regalia. It's a Redeemer mod. And so what you do is you'd craft the suffixes, always get the suffixes first. That's why you use this item. But if you can afford it, you can also do... Uh, and I'm talking afford it as in you have like 30, 40 divines to spare. It's actually a little more. You can do suffixes cannot be changed, reforge influence, and hope to get blind aura on here. You can also get other um, good things like fizz taken as or plus one int or sorry, plus one socketed, but yeah. There's not a convenient way to apply blind otherwise. There really isn't. This is the only way. Your next best thing is to get a watcher's eye mod that gives you like 50% chance to inflict blind on enemies when they hit you, which at that point you should probably just stop caring about the malediction as nice as it is and just get energy shield on your on your body armor. Um, oh, one quick thing to mention on top of, as far as uh, if you can't afford Darkseer, we have a Matua Tapuna corruption here for Fizz taken as any element works here. Um, it's a ton of Fizz mitigation combined with our Taste of Hate and such, but if you don't have plus two from Darkseer, because our purities are actually socketed in the Matua Tipuna, um, if you don't have Darkseer, you're going to need to get a plus two socketed AoE or plus two socketed Aura Corruption on the shield to get them back to level 23 once they're socketed in there. Um, speaking of which, it used to not matter, but now be sure to have Purity of Lightning and Ice on here. Um, actually, it only matters in the endgame version, but you put Purity of Light, Lightning and Purity of Ice on Arrogance so that your Coruscating Elixir, which gives max Fire Res, can get you that last 1% of Fire Res that you would otherwise be missing. That also helps your Nebulous carry to you know, not need to anoint yeah. anything or do anything to get she max does. Res since it's just 90 off the Aura bot. 
All right. And then just real quick, Marauder slot. Um, this is an elegant hubris with the node superiority in three of the slots. We anoint one of them, then we path all the way down to champion of the cause. That gives this version like another 15% more aura effect than the militant faith version had. Um, it also has really good recovery in maps and in simulacrums because of this mastery that we couldn't get on the other version. Um, that's pretty much the benefit of this version. If you can snipe one of these, it's really cheap. Um, and then we have the minion instability version up here. The benefit of putting a, an elegant hubris in the top slot is that with the right number, you can spawn superiority on this mana wheel right here or this mana wheel right here, and you can actually grab the 12% mana res efficiency node without spending extra points so we don't no longer go over to Dreamer and all that. Given that, this version, uh, both of the Elegant Hubris versions are built around using Guardian's Blessing with the uh, Summon Holy Relic. So if that is a deal breaker for you, you can go to uh, Soul Capture plus Laviangas, or worst case scenario, you're going to have to give up four to five points and take a Mana Mastery, put a Craft on both of your rings, and then use a Mana Flask. I feel like I should just reiterate how bad Soul Catcher Laviangas it's, is. It's so bad. I've never even used it. I've just played with you while you were using it. <laughs> and... Truly... I would not would not wish it on my worst enemy. Although I might wish Guardian's Blessing plus Summon Holy Relic. On if you have, because it is even worse in my opinion. But once I hate you have... having to. Yeah. I was gonna say once you have the Guardian Node and you have like aura effect scaling. Yeah. You have like once you have the Guardian Node and aura effect defense. scaling, it barely doesn't die. Um, it barely doesn't die essentially at level twenty. Which speaking of which. It's really easy to fall into the trap of using like a level one summon holy relic that, which makes it so that you can actually sustain it with its vi with your vitality. It'll never burn itself to death. Um, don't do that. The as, as annoying as it is to resummon a holy relic every twelve seconds, the worst part by far of the guardian's blessing tech is when the holy relic dies and you didn't notice it, and then you just don't have an aura on you. Um, for however long until you would have otherwise resummoned it. So keep it at level 20 or level 21 if you can for the extra durability. Uh, last thing to mention is the minion instability version here. This is, I wanted to give an example of how um, in case that belt is like 300 divines or what the benefit you can get from not using it is you can use Cincture of Benevolence with the Link Mastery here. These small buff effect nodes are actually a lot of tankiness for your carry. Which means that this version is going to be really good for, like, uh, I mean, all versions are good for essentially all builds. Um, they're, but this version especially can be nice when you pair it with, like, a Magic Find carry. Because with Cincture of Benevolence, your Magic Find carry, as I said, their slots are always filled up with, like, Quicksilver, Divination Distillate, Gold Flask, probably Dying Sun if they're, you know, Degenerate Bow build. For Genesis, and if you so, can afford it, just because how broken yes, that Yes, thank is. you. I had, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot we were minus one. We're in a minus one flask slot meta. If you use life, you have a progenesis equipped. It's true. Uh, good call. And then you can use like a bismuth flask, jade, granite flask, flasks that your carry would otherwise never be able to use because they don't have the magical MF stat on it. They can benefit from those. And you can also overcap your resistances a bunch, which is really nice for Exarch and Eater altars. Um, yeah. And then... Final thing here, going to the aspirational version. Uh, made some updates to it. This version also is using Guardian's Blessing. This one has enough aura effect that it actually doesn't die uh, by itself, which makes it somewhat tolerable. If you're not in super hard content, it is now a zero button permanent blessing as long as it doesn't die. Um, the Mage Blood changes at at this level of investment, the flash changes are definitely a nerf, obviously, without Mage Blood, and even on the high investment endgame versions, your flasks are now, or what would be the Ellie flasks, aren't actually giving you any durability, they're only giving you overcap, so instead we've gone for Jade, Quartz, Silver, essentially making you really fast, giving you a lot of damage avoidance, um, 
That's about it. This version also uses Dark Seer. I think that Dark Seer, if you can blind enemies, is probably best in slot for a generic um, multi mirror aura bot. The one exception to that is if you are endgame, you have multiple mirrors and you're playing with a either Bama and the Bama carry is using a Fizbo or a Fizbo carry with like a mirror tier Fizbo. What would be better than this is to look into what's called hatred botting, where you just scale your hatred ore effect up to the moon, up to like 450%, and you focus on that. And to do that, you actually don't use bubonic, you use divine blessing in um March Halo, of the what is it called? March of the Legion. Thank you. Use it. Which it comes it with was divine blessing. March so you... of Legion. Yeah. Yep. It saves you multiple gem sockets and it gives you a bunch of ore effect on that. And so if you're Paired with a Fizbo carry, that's probably the best thing you can do. Otherwise, this is a very good, probably two to three mirror um, generic, generic aura bot here. All right, is there anything right. else to cover on the aura bot? I think that's, that's all I believe that's it. Yeah, that's the end of it. Yeah. All right. Mercifully. Uh... <laughs> all right. All right, let me pull up the my own path of building here, and we'll start talking about the carry builds. So the first thing in terms of carry builds is uh, instead of making this video earlier, we just made a flowchart tell you what carry build you should play. Here, let me hide the camera real quick so you can pause it. You want to just get a screenshot. We'll also post a link to the file in the um, description and put it in the like, useful resources and stuff. So it'll just tell you what build you should play. A fun, fun thing to make. Uh, so I'll start with the Stormbrand carry. The first thing that people are asking is, Penance Brand of Dissipation got nerfed, Stormbrand of Indecision got nerfed, is the brand carry okay? Are we still doing okay? And the thing is, this build was made and tested for a version of the game that didn't have Stormbrand of Indecision or Penance Brand of Dissipation. So this was made before we had overpowered brand skills. We got them, it made the build better, but now they're gone, the build's still exactly as it, good as it was going to be yeah. this patch Better than it was had. going to be. Yeah. Actually, yeah. I mean, let 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 it be known that we were brand enjoyers before it was cool, but um, <laughs> the build still has. I think it's something like forty to fifty percent more than it would have back when we decided it was really good. Yeah, I don't think it's currently worth using Stormbrand of Indecision. Um, the numbers on like I'll double check with that. I I did. Uh, okay. I should have triple checked on that, but yeah. That so it's not currently in the pob. If if double checking on that changes, it'll. Be reflected in that i see at all points of progression you think or just the late I game i think so um i don't think all it's right. quite good enough to use because before it did so much extra damage you didn't care that it didn't chain out to multiple targets yeah um but i think it's actually a little bit annoying so and it's not that much better okay. numerically anymore um but anyways penance brand of dissipation so people are asking should you use penance brand on this P dissipation penance brand is still good it's still one of the best boss killer skills in the game but it's not so much better than storm brand that it's worth using basically at all in my opinion if you're doing nothing but uber yep. boss farming you can swap over to penance brand without changing anything else on this character uh, what you would want to do is take these duration nodes instead of the uh cooldown recovery rate um you still anoint brand equity and you try to pick up a forbidden flame and flesh to get one of the duration wheels on Scion, because when your brands expire, also never use Swift Brand on Penance Brand of Dissipation. You are completely screwing yourself if you do that. It is very bad because when your brands expire, they lose the energy stacks. So you have to like re ramp again. So, yep, just yep. You, you can swap it in, but it feels bad to have to ramp damage, and Storm Brand is so quick and snappy. I, I, I don't think I would ever use. And it's yeah, like, the, this character. like last time we league started bossing actually and we we went to test penance of dissipation which at that point was actually slightly weaker than it is now because rune binder was bugged with it and we we tested on a, on an uber cirrus at that point and we're like oh this is clearly way more damage because it killed uber cirrus in like three seconds instead of four seconds you know so yeah. by the time you really are doing uber bosses and you're considering like what if i need a hundred and 50 million instead of 80 million DPS, it doesn't really matter at that point. And, you know, mm -hmm. if you if you choose to pursue the big number, then by all means. But uh, 
Yeah. Another uh, another big thing I changed about this build is reworking the leveling. Before I was using Armageddon brand with recall and not using cremation, and the reason is is because with the brand nodes you can get you can get fine you know get by just fine with using Arma recall, um, but. I found that I wanted just a bit more damage from playing it. It's so, so it's like, it's nice not to have to press two extra buttons to do damage and like desecrate cremation, but it's like, I think it's a, a worth, you know, so you don't have to over gear. And so I just swapped over to using Arma Cremation just because it gives you a longer window where you can comfortably be farming like red maps before you have to switch over to Stormbrand. Um, so it just makes that part of the build feel a little bit less painful. Uh, I also want to say that Impulsa is incredibly important for Stormbrand. Like, don't do Stormbrand without Impulsa. That feels bad. Uh, or if you do, just be aware that you're playing a very, very weak version of the build in terms of clear speed because of how much it adds. Um, also, I wanted to just double reiterate that in this version here, we're using Elevated Physics Explode because it's actually better than just an Impulsa. Um, and so that's why we're converting all of our physical damage to lightning, even though we're using just Stormbrand. So it's just for the explode yep. conversion. So that um, it benefits from uh, your nebulous damage. Yep, so it benefits because you convert to lightning, then convert to cold, and you get all that scaling. Uh, finally, also, just exploding nebs. If you can get them on this version, they're going to be insane. Like, it's maybe oh, more they're common. They're so good. They're so good. So like, good. Can't overstate that. Like, it doesn't matter exploding for Exploding nebs, really. it's something you can just build around for an Orobot yeah. and a carry. But, it's real nice. Although, obviously, there are two other sources of explode. Your body armor, you know, whether that be Impulsa or a Physics Explode chest, and then Ori Ascend later on. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, which you can just add Ori Ascend in, in a slot here, you know. Drops yep. Quicksilver, or drops Silver. Oh, it's in this version. <laughs> it shows you what no. I know. You fool, you forgot. It's <laughs> composed entirely of boss uniques. Right? You thought our flasks weren't also boss drops? Uh, but the build felt really great to play. Uh, so now that it's been out a league, you just can confirm Stormbrand is an excellent choice. I, I like it more than Spark. Um, there's a couple things that Spark does better, a few things that this does better. They're pretty equivalent, but the brand recall into exploding an entire pack play style and then doing bosses, just being able to drop your brands on them and run around without having to root while casting, it just feels so nice. So maybe that's also I've played Spark a ton and this is new and fresh. So. Um... Yep, that's about it on the Stormbrand carry. Go back, and we'll jump into the Spark carry. So most versions are the same. Like, like all of them, there's just been a handful of small changes and improvements that we make when... Like, you come back to a build after not looking at it for a couple months, and you just, like, review everything from A to Z. You yeah. know, you, you just start taking things apart, putting them back together, make lots of tiny, small tweaks and such. Um, Try to do that and then find out that the way it was before was actually optimal and you just spent one hour or two just figuring that out all over again. It's a great time. Well, don't we don't we know that all too well? We did that with the orb up you be like last minute. I was like, wait a second. Wait a second, what if we don't use Cincture at all? And I like took it all apart, put it back together, or or what if we use Cincture in every version? Like redid every version mm -hmm. like thirty hours before the league launch. It's no, no, it was like it was like five percent better before. <laughs> yeah, it happens all the time, every time. I keep trying to change the pathing or swap things around, and it just ends up the same. Um, yep. I did add tattoos to the in-game version, you know, get the prod speed tattoos on the dex nodes. I don't think it's worth going out of your way to get more dex nodes for prod speed, just because, you know, with the gloves, you're annoying. It, it, you get enough that it's not worth going out of your way for more dex nodes, but, you know, putting tattoos on yep. the ones you have is very nice. Um, also probably not going to be worth dropping faster prod support, especially early on, um, but... Yeah, because not only is it yeah. a good damage link, it also just feels really good. And that's the most important yeah. thing when playing a carry build. Because you have an aura bot, you're going to be extremely powerful. So prioritize the things that make it feel good to play. Um, another thing I did is the Magic Find version was pretty good as an entry point. Um, you know, it was a solid choice. But I found that, uh, you know, you, you get enough currency where you can upgrade past this point and... So I made a high budget Magic Find version that should just feel a lot better to play. Uh, so just add a further investment point just to make you know progression on Magic Find feel better. You still have to use Nighting Light because you can't use Nebs because you can't use Call of the Brotherhoods. I mean, you could if you really wanted to, but I think Death Rush is too invaluable to lose. One of the problems yep. with being an Inquisitor Spellcaster is it's hard to scale movement speed because there's just not a lot on the tree you can take. And then when you're magic finding, you know, you don't have a lot of gear slots to work with. So anywhere that you can get move speed 
and just stuff that makes it feel better to play I think is very valuable. More important than getting a little extra magic find stats on adventures here. Um, but yeah, this version uses the eight link gloves. Uh, like before, there'll be a link on how to craft those in the description. I think it was Spicy Sushi's video. It was an excellent one. Um, yeah, so they're, they're just, they give you faster projectiles than the links. Uh, and that that's just very nice. I added, uh, this This is a helmet. Just have named it Res Fixer. You don't need like T1 Res and prefixes or, or suffixes. You just kind of see where you're sitting with Res without with blasts, without them. Uh, you know, with Annihilating Light, you got a lot of room to work. And if you still don't have enough, you can always just get some res on a jewel or, you know. But this should be more than enough to uh, just fix your res and make it feel good. Uh, what else? Oh, uh, currently, I need to swap this. Uh, I put CB immunity on a careful planning. Um, and then on the notes, something I had to change. They changed this to a corruption only jewel. So you can't actually get implicits. So, you know, you just do, I'll just swap it over to an implicit on one of the uh, other jewels. Uh, oh, one last thing on magic finding is amulet choice. Ascetic is very, very good in like the first couple days of the league because it gives you a ton of rarity. And early on, that matters a lot because uniques are extremely valuable. Come day three, four, five, unique value has kind of fallen off. So it becomes better to get something with want, uh, you know, like using an Eyes of the Great Wolf or Biscos or a Simplex amulet. <laughs> Which, speaking of Simplex Amulet, I I had put a Simplex Amulet in the budget endgame because we didn't know they were going to be ludicrously um, expensive as a base type, yeah. right? They were like, oh, super like, common like you before. You just put strength on it. You just, <laughs> it's so cheap. It's such a budget-friendly you know? option because you just essence until another mod and then you craft. Look at the prog speed. So this will save so much money. <laughs> they just put a Simplex Amulet in budget endgame, endgame, oh, every was, version. Weren't they like a yeah. mirror at the end of the league, something like that? It was insane. It, there, there were 1.4 mirrors on Split, <laughs> I think. It's crazy. Yep. Um, so yeah, obviously not using a Simplex Amulet on any versions anymore. Uh, but yeah, so... Although it would be this here if you want to put, like, multiple mirrors or yep, a you... mirror into the Magic Find version. Yes, because you can get other stats. Um, I have Eyes of the Great Wolf with Crit Multi. Obviously, you don't have to get that. That just That's the best stat if you can get one, so might as well just put it there. Um, and then Biscos is still surprisingly good. I think people... We found out that it's it's a little bit... We were kind of sleeping on it. It's still not quite as good as 20 Quant, but it's uh, still an excellent choice. Yeah, especially with the league mechanic boosting, um, giving like occasionally giving rarity and quantity rewards to the monsters that it replaces. The monsters that it replaces typically being magic and white packs that already spawned in the map. Mm -hmm. um, so you get a little bit of extra value there that you might otherwise not in previous leagues. And because this is a magic find version, something we might actually have it in POB now. Before we would left mouse button click on Corrupting Fever. And that would just spend life to counteract the recovery from Distillate. Now we can just link automation support to it. And you want to level up Corrupting Fever until it's counteracting your uh, recovery from Distillate. And then stop leveling it because otherwise you're just spending more life than you need to. Not that it matters on this build because you have so much life regen as an Inquisitor. But it matters a little bit on the bow character. Which we will get to now. Is there anything else on this part, Carrie, that we needed to go over? Mm, don't believe so. All right. Back to bow we go. So tornado as, shot as always, as in the <laughs> game. Back to bow we go. Tornado shot got hit with the nerf bat, uh, straight up kneecapped. That is basically half Finally. as good as it was before. Yeah, I mean I can't say I'm too yeah. sad about it. Half it's as been... much damage. It's gonna feel even worse than half as bad. It is Minus projectiles. Mm -hmm. It is my favorite skill in the game still, but it was just too good, so can't say I'm too. Uh, I'm not, about perhaps it. not qualified to say it. I want to say Tornado Shot is not completely dead once you have like a mirror bow and yeah. such, but uh, it's like you, you scaled to the point where you just click and everything dies always, and you can still get there. It's just going to be yeah. a little worse. A um, little beyond the relevancy of these uh, progression mm -hmm. guides, at least uh, for so this character. The version that used Tornado Shot is now switched over to Lightning Arrow, and we use a Mana Forge setup for single target on this version. So this is what all of the magic find bow players are doing, and it's still a solid choice, you know? It's not going to feel as good as Tornado Shot because it's not Tornado Shot, but it'll still feel excellent. Um, has good clear, decent single target, you know? Um, so I've changed that around here. Uh, you can see... Actually using a Rat's Nest in this version because it gives move speed, attack speed, and damage. Move speed, attack speed, rarity, wow. Yeah, 
It's 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 actually just good. Um, you can use a rare hat if you need more durability, yeah. but see that reduced character size. That's a deal breaker. Your aura bot is never <laughs> going to be able to find you on the screen. Don't don't tell me you look at anything other than the tab overlay to follow the green X. Yeah, true. Imagine looking at what's going on in the screen in Path of Exile. Uh, so you you just do storm rain, blast rain with the mana forge setup. And this is like you just you don't have to use multiple buttons, so it feels pretty smooth. In terms, uh, same thing as the Spark Carry, you just use Corrupting Fever, just level it up to whatever level it needs to be to counteract Distillate, and then you're good to go. You don't even have to LMB it now that Automation Support exists, because it's just an instant skill. Uh, there was a couple other things on Lightning Arrow. Um, I didn't change the leveling out of Artillery Ballista, because I've played this build and tested it the several times I've done it with Artillery Ballista, and I know it works, and I personally really like using Artillery Ballista for progression and early mapping, even into red maps. And so while at the end, you know, we're using a Mana Forge setup, you can still use a Mana Forge setup through leveling instead of Artillery Ballista. There are lots of great resources on Lightning Arrow Deadeye out there. Um, Fubgun, Snoobay, there's a couple other people that have really good Lightning Arrow Deadeye, so you can just use those gym links and then drop the totem nodes. But yeah. as I said, personally, I really like it, and I didn't want to change the leveling over to something that I'm not convinced is necessarily better uh, without having played it and tested it myself. Uh, right. The, the other nice thing about Artillery Ballista super early on is that before you're killing the entire screen in one click, you're only killing four-fifths of the screen. The mm -hmm. Artillery Ballista auto-targets anything that survived, and so can help pick off stragglers before you're just obliterating everything with one click. Yep, so there's there's a lot of room for preference there, but personally, I like I like it while progressing, so I didn't want to change it too much. Uh, yep. Last thing, uh, oh, if you're trying to farm Legion, so this currently we go into Artillery Ballista into a Magic Find Mana Forge setup. If you're trying to farm Legion, uh, Romp pointed out that Mana Forge is just way better than Artillery Ballista for that. So you know, instead of doing this, you just swap over to Mana Forged for Legion farming before you do Magic Find. So just worth mentioning that. All right, uh, I think that's it on the bow character. If there's not anything else you have, Seek. I think that's it. All right, now on to Bama. Blink arrow, mirror arrow. This is like the new build in the block. Uh, it looks very promising. The damage numbers are excellent. However, it's not worth, or it, it wouldn't be right for us to like make a bomba pob and put it out it's like here's the bomba pob you should play without having played it uh, like there's so much that you discover between when you make a pob for a build and then actually playing that build where you learn so many new things you find out all the mistakes you made you find this feels bad this feels bad you want to change it and so we don't have obama carry yep. <laughs> no obama build uh, uh now snap does have a, have a uh duo obama carry and his party guide video you should always check that check that out it's like the godfather of party builds and path of exile um so you know if you haven't watched that video and watched his information on it check it out there and then there's a few people that have really good bama solo guides uh previ and somebody else i'll, I'll link them in the description uh, and, and so if you want to like play bama there now i don't necessarily recommend that you play Bama just because it's new. It is a very button intensive build to play. A lot of its damage is conditional. It's very good with a Kohler because you just have such high damage numbers. And if you're doing like a six man, it's definitely best. Um, but don't be fooled into thinking you're missing out by not playing it. Like the current carry builds are absolutely excellent. They're tried and tested. So um, it's just another new option that if you want to try something new, shake things up a bit. Any other thoughts on Bama? I think that's mostly all I have to add. Just a reminder if you for progressing Bama early, um, pairing it with an Orobot, you essentially want to treat it as like an elemental bow carry. Um, as far as how you scale the Orobot, you want to look at, I think, Previ's guide or some other guides that started out as elemental damage attack based rather than like a poison necro solo guide. And then once you have the currency, um, or if you are uh, trying to get the, if you're trying to optimize the duo setup, you then look at snaps later on once you have a little bit more currency, and then you can start treating it at that point as sort of a fizzbo carry, which means you care about hatred later on. Mm -hmm. Using like the uh, lionized glare. Yep, lionized glare. 
Yep. And that's where you get far shot. That's one of the things that make it, makes it a little clunky to play, just from talking with people who've played it, is you have to place the clones far away from the thing you're shooting. So you have to, you got a lot of buttons to push and where you click them matters. Personally, I like monkey brain click button stuff die and not having to think about it much more than that. So I like tornado shot, lightning arrow, storm brand, spark, where you Fair just enough. click and everything dies, you know? Um, also, it's not, we don't have a build for it, but people have asked about kinetic blast as a magic find carry. It's an excellent choice. It's on the, uh, it's on the flow chart. It's fun. It's not tornado shot for the 18th time. Yep, it's different, and it was already almost as good as Tornado Shot. Now that Tornado Shot's dead, it might even be uh, might even be the best Magic Find carry skill. Uh, on to the Mana Guardian Curse Bot. So the first thing, before I talk about any changes or anything else, this is the part where you figure out how to solve mana. Uh, so if you're, you know, somebody's going to like say, how do I solve mana on this build? It's going to link to this timestamp. We're going to fix the mana problem because... We run Shav's Revelation, and this makes it so you cannot recharge mana and or regenerate mana. So how do we get our mana back if we can't regenerate our mana? So the first thing, first source, is we have recover 1% of mana when you curse a non-cursed enemy. So you're going to be running around, throwing out Kinetic Bolt, it's going to curse enemies, and that's going to give you mana sustain. The next way we get mana is by recouping damage taken as mana. So I don't actually remember where the nodes are. Uh, you know, 10% here, Battle Rouse. Here, uh, battle rouse. Yep. Um, there's 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 a bunch of mana recoup. It's a mastery. Got, it's it's a mastery. And a mastery, um, mastery. I think there's an item that has it. I don't even remember now. It's memory vault has yeah, memory fifteen vault. to twenty percent. I want to say. Uh, it no, does not. not I vault. thought it does. It uh, was okay. the uh, you, you're thinking of. I forget what it's called. It's the item that you use if you're doing like a mana mm -hmm. vault lightning. Mana storm? No. A anyways. No. We have a, a, I'll get back we, to you. We have damage taken right. recoup as mana. Now this does not work with damage redirected from Soul Link. We tested it. So the problem with relying on recoup is if you run completely out of mana, these two methods don't work. You can't because you'd be zero mana, right? So you can't cast a skill to curse enemies, and you can't, uh, you know, you can't. You won't be taking damage from Soul Link to recharge your mana. So that brings us to the third method, and we kind of do all three of these because why wouldn't you? And that's recover 10% of mana over one second when you use a guard skill. Now, this does not work with automation support because this mastery does not proc when, it, when triggers happen. Like, we're just assuming it has the same behavior as like castle channeling or castle damage taken, which is what I tested. Um, so this means that you used to LMB Molten Shell and that's how you recovered mana. You can't do that now. So you'll have to either manually click it um, as an option or... Uh, most importantly that this mastery gives is it's a restart button if you run completely out of mana. If you run completely out of mana, this mastery does work with Vol Molten Shell. So you just run Vol Molten Shell, you have the button on your bar. If you ever run completely out of mana, you just press that button and now your uh, your mana goes up and you don't have to do anything wonky to, to restart from like the fail condition. Um, finally, we reserve we want to reserve as much of our mana as possible because we're a mana guardian. And this node here gives us armor and ES equivalent to our reserved mana. So to get the most value of this, out of this, we reserve as much mana as possible. However, you want there to be enough of a buffer between... You, you want to have enough of a mana pool that you're not having mana problems. And so currently we are running a level 20 clarity. This does nothing. The Orbot clarity is better, but running level 20 makes it reserve more mana. So if you just drop this clarity level down, that'll give you an increasingly high buffer pool um, to work with on mana. So between all those methods, mana should not be an issue. It's, uh, you know, solved there. Anything else before I jump to the other parts of the mana guardian? Okay, so yeah. next thing is I reworked the leveling. Before, it was kind of like a half-assed leveling tree where it's like, here's a tree that you can do to pull enough weight that you're not pulling your party down while also minimizing respect points. And it was using Spark, which is only okay, and it was like kind of rushing curses. I, I thought about it, and I, I came to the conclusion that if I'm personally going to play this build, I don't want to play a gimped character for the first 10 hours of the league. Because instead, I could be playing a proper character and then running heist. So you level with the party, the mana guardian splits off and just lives in heist to generate currency for the main group. 
you don't mind being down levels a bit on mana guardian um because really you're you're not necessary for once the party reforms you know so what i would do is use this new leveling tree level with the party then swap over to heist now this is arma cremation and this will feel perfectly good as a solo character so i basically just built this as you know, it's it's not like a weak character to progress. This is actually a very strong, good character. It might even be better than like the Inquisitor Arma Cremation because you get big guy and elemental minion instead of um, Inquisitor nodes, which don't give you a ton for Arma Cremation early. So this will actually feel very good to play. You know, standard rolling magma into Arma Cremation start, grab all the broken nodes, fill it out more. Um, we get a little bit of aura reservation and Later on, I put haste in as an aura, but assuming you're playing with a party, make sure that you're just running auras that other people aren't, so you get maximum benefit. You know, by the time we finish leveling five, we've just taken enough nodes that we can comfortably live in heist forever. And uh, yeah, I, I, I need to add a couple of items. This, there used to be six leveling trees, I can them into five, so I'll rename this. Broken Crown is just a decent helmet, it gives you chaos res and ES. You can probably also do like Ghost Ride on this version, but you're doing heist at, at any floor rare. Should Doesn't be really matter. Enough. All you care about is Bright Beak equipped in main hand. Leap Slam, mm -hmm. Leap Slam, Leap Slam. Click door. You have uh, enough damage to kill things because Fire Mastery, Do Wield Mastery are pretty busted. Yep, I'll put in Bright Beak there. Actually, I'll put it as a note because uh, that should be added to the POB because the point is to run heist. You want to be as fast as possible, right? But reality is going to love this. <laughs> All right. Uh, last thing, uh, Perkles versus Foible on the last version. So Perkles is an insane item. Use it. Uh, just depends on what your carry is. You know, currently I think I have Foible in this. If your carry can benefit from Perkles, meaning if they're like a lightning damage base, uh, you know, you can just check. You can like open up the carry's POB and see how much damage is lucky gives them. Um, you know, for a lightning carry like a spark. Or a Stormbrand, it's going to be like 27% more damage. It'll be even better if it's a Bama with like volatility support. Um, just use uh, Perkle's Toe. But if you don't have a carry that can really benefit from it, then you just use Foible. So simple choice there. And I think that's it. We've covered everything. No way. All, All done. right. Um, the last thing is I guess we'll talk about our League Start plans. Because we're not starting in a duo this league and we're not playing trade. We're going to be playing an e-story with Exiles as like a group found league. And not for any particular reason. It just seems like it's going to be a lot of fun. It seems like a cool group of people. And, you know, can't play the same build and build archetype every league or you drive yourself crazy. So I'm going to be YOLOing a Tornado of Elemental Turbulence Hierophant. I think Seek is going to play some harebrained shit. Very of off madness. meta skill. You might not have heard of it. It's called Detonate Dead of Chain no. Reaction. And I will quickly swap. The moment someone drops a Beacon of Madness, I'm going to swap and start subjecting my hands to uh, weapon swaps every three seconds forever. And keep in, Yeah, you literally have to weapon swap every three seconds or your build breaks. So that's... <laughs> It'll be a fun time. <laughs> keep you awake, you know? None of this uh, aura bot only pressing 27 buttons, falling asleep at the wheel. Mm -hmm. Now we get to press 29 buttons. Yeah. And then last, I guess I just didn't talk about it. I, we're, I'm just really excited for Necropolis League. It looks like by far the best league we've had in a long time. Um, yeah, in-map mechanic, in -map crafting mechanic, mechanic. crafting, yeah. All of the checkboxes. Can't say that it has to live up to the expectations of Recombinators. Not sure anything ever will, but last time we had a crafting in-map mechanic, it was in Sentinel, so it was a good time. It's Crucible, technically. Oh, it's that, crucible. that don't, don't call that an in-map mechanic. <laughs> What, you don't want to click and hold for As six the seconds? As out and then your mouse cursor mm -hmm. slips off because it changed the point of view? I still can't believe they doubled no, down you. in the click and holding for Tota. It's God. something else. It's quite a time. Those are like five, four and a half to five month leagues back to back too. <laughs> Alright, yeah, that about covers it. Uh, thank you for watching. We'll catch you guys later. I'll still be streaming League Start, I'm, I, I'm sure. I'm just playing our own things, just chilling in voice, having a good time, so... Yep. Yeah. And then if you, final thing is if you haven't joined the Discord, join the Discord. It's extremely helpful. There's a lot of people that are more helpful than we are even that uh, um, they're always answering questions and making it a really welcoming place to just learn about the game and find people to play with. So, yeah. yeah.
you got a character to be fixed, that's the place to go. Also mm -hmm. got a lot of uh, resources that are in the description and also in the Discord for um, a lot of wonderful people in our community have made actual tools to find timeless jewels to uh, check out your character's stats and things like that. So be sure to also look for those. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Catch you later.